Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. Fruit trees are a wonderful way to grow food in your yard, and with a little bit of effort, they can produce large crops for you for decades to come. The only real work that I have to put into my trees is a little bit of pruning. It helps keep the tree healthy, prevents damage, and increases your yields over time. And in my opinion, it makes the tree visually appealing in my yard. My general philosophy when it comes to pruning is to prune a little bit at a time. I hope to avoid pruning the tree too much all at once. If your tree has not been pruned for a long time, you may need to prune a little more aggressively before you can get yourself to a more regular schedule. If you do have to prune more aggressively, you may not get as heavy of a harvest the next season, but over the course of the following seasons, you will more than make up for it. The best time to prune is in the spring before the buds break dormancy. Pruning in the spring is said to be less hard on the tree. The concept is that the tree will break dormancy in a growth phase and the pruning will encourage the growth that you wish to have. Fall pruning is much more common in higher zones. However, here in zone three, I like to do a little light pruning in order to spread the events out a little bit and help to prevent shock to my trees. Generally, I do fall pruning right after I've harvested my crops. Pruning at this time will allow the tree some time to recover before fall. The general rule of thumb is you don't want to remove more than 20% of your overall tree's size in one pruning. And pruning on smaller trees, you can easily reach that. So by spreading your pruning sessions out over the course of a summer, you help to avoid too much shock. All I use for pruning my fruit trees is a sharp pair of pruning shears. As your tree grows larger, you may need a saw. Before pruning any tree and between trees, I make sure to sterilize my equipment with a light bleach solution. This will help prevent diseases from spreading. I like to prune suckers or water sprouts in the fall. They typically grow vertically from branches and take energy away from future fruiting and increase the stress on main branches. Before making each cut, make sure to look twice in order to make sure you're making the best decision possible. That said, don't worry if you make a mistake. The tree will grow and you can correct it later. When removing water sprouts, I cut as close to the branch as possible, making sure not to damage the branch itself. This allows for quick healing. Sealing the cut location is optional, but it will reduce the chances that diseases will get into the wound. I seal mine with grafting wax, but a wide variety of methods work perfectly well, such as sealing it with grafting tape or putty. If you have sprouts coming up from the base of the tree or the grass around the tree, you can remove them any time of year. They show up as a result of the pruning and may simply be a stress response. Removing them will send the growth to the remainder of the tree. I generally avoid pruning trees that are under two to three years old like my Paul's pear or have been in your yard for less than a year. Planting and establishing is stressful enough and if you add pruning to this, you may end up causing your tree to die back or worse. The same principle applies to newly grafted scions. This Manitoba apple was grafted this spring and has done wonderfully, but pruning it may threaten the graft's success. In the spring, before the buds break, I will do some more pruning, catching branches that are reaching back across the center and topping out branches for easy access, among other pruning objectives. If you'd like a more detailed video on how I prune fruit trees, I'll put a link at the end of this video and in the description below. For now, I'm gonna keep the pruning fairly light, and it just gives me a little bit of a head start on this spring's pruning. Pruning will increase the tree's health and overall aesthetics. And you really do want to keep on top of it so that it only takes a few minutes in the spring and potentially the fall for you to have large harvests of apples year after year. If you'd like to learn how you can graft other varieties of fruit to your tree, check out the link on screen now and make sure to subscribe to catch all future episodes.